All right, we're going to uh, go to the Gospel of Matthew tonight, Matthew and chapter number 6. chapter number 6. Last week we looked at verses 19 and 20 and uh, tonight we're going to continue that portion of scripture. It says in verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And so last Sunday night, we looked at the, the you know, just the practicality of this. Uh, we are encouraged to not try and store up treasures on this earth. We are encouraged to store up treasures in heaven. And we're told why. We're told that the moth will eat them up here. We're told that rust will wear them down. We're told that thieves will steal them. Here. All of those are problems here. They are not problems in heaven. We don't have to worry about uh, treasures in heaven. Uh, we don't have to worry about something damaging them. We don't have to worry about uh, them getting uh, decaying over time. We don't have to worry about someone stealing them. We don't have to worry about that in heaven. So that's why we're encouraged in a very practical way, uh, as much as possible, to try and not value things down here, uh, material possessions. Uh, try to value them as little as possible. We all value them. Okay? That's another thing I, I stated last Sunday night. We all have this struggle. Materialism isn't a 21st century thing. <laughs> it's not a 20th century thing. It's been a human thing. It's been a human thing from the very beginning. Uh, I wonder if uh, we, we studied Jacob and Esau this morning and how Jacob tricked Esau out of his birthright for a bowl of soup. And uh, I wonder if part of Jacob's motivation was a little bit of materialism. I don't know that. Uh, I, I don't think all of his motivation was so good in all of that. It wound up, you know, working out well for him in his life. Uh, you know, the birthright was a blessing. But uh, I'm not so sure all of his motivations were so good in all of that. Uh, materialism has always been a human problem. The Egyptians were materialistic. So they enslaved the Jews and made them do slave labor for them. Uh, materialism is what produced slavery okay? as an institution worldwide. Materialism is a, a human problem. We as Christians are encouraged to try and, 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 and value heavenly things and treasure heavenly things and lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven uh, and, and as much as possible and uh, not try to focus so much on treasures on the earth because they're, they're temporal. They're going to go away. All right, so that was that was uh, uh, last Sunday night's message in a nutshell. And let's let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, before we go any further. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to bless uh, uh, your word tonight, the preaching of your word. I, I ask it, I ask you to to help me to to be very clear in it. Lord, help me uh, not to muddy the water for anybody. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, just pray that uh, I bring uh, the truth found in this portion of Scripture out. Uh, the way that you would have it brought out, Lord. I ask you to empty me of self and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Encouraged to lay up treasures in heaven, not treasures on the earth. Again, the three reasons, moths, rust, and thieves. We're in Matthew chapter 6. Brother if you, you probably know that from what I've already said. In verse number 21, though, we're given a very serious reason for this. An even more serious reason than moths, rust, and thieves. In verse number 21, we're told this. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now that's an even bigger problem. It's one thing, to, to me, to talk about moths and rust and, and thieves in verses 19 and 20. That's a very practical approach that, that Jesus has made. He's, he's like, really stop and think about this. Your earthly treasures, moths are going to damage them. Rust is going to wear them down. And thieves are going to value it too, and they're going to figure out how they can get it. Okay, Stop and practically think about that. Think about it from a very practical sense. Anything you value down here, it's very temporary. It's going to go away. People who value money in our day, okay, uh, be careful doing that. You say, well, I don't value any, I don't value cars, I don't value houses, I don't, I don't value, you know, a bigger, better this, a bigger, better vote. You know, I don't value those things. I don't struggle with that. But maybe you value money, and maybe you value what money can do for you, okay? Money is powerful. Money is a powerful tool, but money is a terrible master. And, and so if, let's say that you're valuing money so much, what happens if the economy collapses? And just overnight, you're completely broke. <laughs> that has happened before. I was reading, uh, Jeff Williams wrote a book. He was a missionary in Russia. And uh, his, his dad pastors in Burleson, Texas. It's just that's South Dallas. Uh, and what he did, I think he's retired now. Terry Williams was his uh, uh, dad's name. But uh, Jeff Williams uh, was a missionary in Russia right after the wall in Berlin came down. I think he went, out, went in in like 1991, something like that, went into Russia. Uh, before that, they weren't allowed in there. I mean, it was... Uh, it was pretty, pretty awful, uh, you know, pre pretty scary in Russia. But he went into Russia, and, and he was talking about when their, the day their economy collapsed. And it was pretty shocking. Uh, I can't even imagine going through that. But he explained how the Russian ruble overnight went from like 6 rubles per dollar to like 33 per dollar. And then I think it went up to like 287 rubles per dollar the next day. And then and then they didn't know what it was worth. They had no idea. And he was talking about how his banker came up to him in the middle of the street and said, go get your money out of the bank now. And he was talking about how calm everybody was. Everybody in the bank was calm. Uh, there was nothing out of the ordinary. He went in the bank. He withdrew all of his money, you know, all of his support that had come in that month. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Mark, how the missionaries are supported. They, they usually get like one lump sum each month from their supporting churches. And so he went and withdrew all that, had a, basically a bunch of cash in his, in his pockets, and he didn't feel very comfortable about that, but he was really glad he did the next day because he said the banks closed their doors and never opened them ever again for as long as he was over there. And uh, uh, he was just talking about, then he had, a po he had pockets full of cash. He had like, I think, I think I want to say he had like $5,000, $6,000 worth of American money, and he couldn't spend it anywhere because nobody knew what it was worth. He's talking about how crazy that was. How he would go to a vendor and they'd be like, "I, I don't, uh, I don't want your American dollars." It was worth nothing, all of a sudden, because they couldn't, they didn't know how many rubles it was worth. I can't imagine going through that. It's absolutely, uh, 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 just absolutely astonishing to go through that. Now he's, I think they're in Canada now, but, and he was talking about how there were people in their church, in their, you know, Russian people who lost their life savings overnight. Like $200,000 in the savings account overnight, it dropped down to like, a, a, like 10 bucks. Just wiped out. The government seized it, it was gone. You know, it, it, it was just valueless. And I can't even imagine that. You know, inflation today scares me. It very much scares me, inflation in our, if you ever hear that word thrown around a lot, that's why it scares people. Because people have seen economies collapse around the world in other countries, and it's because of inflation. Inflation inflates. It basically is something you used to... Mom, you said you used to go to the movies when you were a little kid. Mm -hmm. You could go on how much? 25 cents would get us in the door. 25 cents would get you in the door. Another 25 would buy candy. <laughs> 25 cents would buy candy. Yeah, so. so you could go on about 50 cents? Yeah. You can't even smell the popcorn for 50 cents today. It's crazy. 
the, just the inflation that we've already got. I, I was mentioning the other day, man, plumber wants $300 just to come out and look. Just to come out and look. That's before they do any work. That's just them to come out and look at what, uh, what work you might have for them to inspect it. That's, that's crazy. Uh, I was, there was a, a certain cut of board. I was spending like, I think $30 a sheet. I found it at one lumber yard for like $17 a sheet. At another lumber yard, it was like $25. I think now that cut is selling for like $55 a sheet. It has gone from 17 to like 23 to like $55. In like no time, COVID has done a lot of this because people stayed home, factories shut down, production stopped, and so the less you have of something, the more valuable what you, you know, that thing becomes. And so it's just it's crazy. I can't even imagine what the future is going to look like. And the Bible talks about how the, how the world's economies are going to be crazy, and you know that's okay. The Bible talks about more diseases are going to be coming. What happens then? What happens to the world's economies then? I, I remember when COVID uh, hit and everybody was shutting down everything. Uh, there was one uh, talk show uh, host who was who was talking about he was he was warning. He said, "Okay, in America, yeah, this is going to hit us a little bit." He said, "But in a third world country where someone is living day to day, and you're telling them they can't work for a week." You're sentencing them to death if you do that. I can't even imagine that. People were arresting people in, in third world countries. These vendors would go out there to sell their wares. I mean, they're living from day to day on whatever they make. They have to do it. And they were being arrested for it. I can't imagine what the future looks like uh, with, with more diseases coming, what, how it's going to affect the economy. Uh, it's just, oh, wow. Uh, what's my point? Try not to value money too much. Try not to value money too much. It's, it's, it's here one minute, it's gone the next. And, and even if you do save a million dollars in the bank, who's to say a million dollars is going to get you very far? It's not going to get you very far when houses are $20 million by that time. It's not going to get you very far. So what, what, what I'm saying is you've got to keep money in its proper perspective. You, if, you, if you overvalue it, but listen, we all need money to survive. We need money to pay the bills. We need money to, to buy a house. We need money to, to purchase a vehicle. We need money to put tires on that vehicle. We need money to put gas in that vehicle. We need money for this, that, and the other. So there are needs, obviously. But valuing money too much is the warning here. And, and laying up, you know, treasuring things on earth too much is the warning because it will have your heart. It will have your heart if you're not careful. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so if you're not, if you're not keeping what you're valuing in check, uh, it, can, it can get out of control and it can control your heart. Uh, secondly, it can control your mind. Look at verse number 22. The light of the body is the eye. And, and uh, what's, who's the guy who does the B series? Brother Mark? Wearsby. I, I like Wearsby's commentary on this. He was talking about how the eye is, uh, in, in the Bible is used to picture your mind. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, if, I'm, if, there, if your mind is focused, okay, if your mind is, is set on one thing, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? It, basically, if your mind is so consumed with materialism and becoming rich, they that will be rich, as, as the Bible says, you know, where they're, I will be. It's my life's goal. If you're consumed by that, um, your, your mind becomes very dark. And so it, it will have your heart, it will have your mind, uh, it will also enslave your will. And look at verse number 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, mammon being money. You can't serve the two. Now, again, 
keep this in, in, in mind what this passage is teaching. It's not teaching that it's wrong to go out here and get a job and make money. It's not teaching that it's wrong to go get a degree to try to make better money. It's not teaching that. It's not teaching that money is evil. You will not find in the Bible that money is evil. It doesn't say that. There's a verse that has money and evil in it. But it doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. So the, it's like the Bible is warning us, if we're not careful, you'll get so focused on making money, you'll get so focused on having earthly treasures, that you will not be valuing things in heaven. You will not be, you will not, uh, it will have your heart. You won't be focused on the things of the Lord. You can't serve two masters. It's telling us very practically, you can't. You're going to have one master. What is it? Is it idolatry? Because that's what materialism is. When you boil it all down, it becomes idolatry becomes an idol to you, something you're worshiping, something that controls your mind, something that controls your heart, something that controls your will. Are you consumed with idolatry? Is that going to be your master, or is Jesus going to be your master? And if Jesus is your master, he's not, a, he's not against his children making money. He's against his children being controlled by money. He's against his children loving money. He's against that. Nowhere in the Bible are you going to find that God tells His children they, they have to be poor. You're not going to find that. In fact, throughout the Bible, you will find when people submit themselves to the Lord and they get right with God, a lot of times He starts blessing them financially a little bit. Sometimes, not always. It's not, this is not a health and wealth gospel. I'm not, I don't agree with these guys out there who are preaching a health and wealth Basically, they start to get to this point where if you're not healthy, well, you must not be godly. Or if you're not wealthy, you must not be godly. I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's not biblical either. You're not going to... Lazarus was a poor man, a poor beggar who went to heaven. Okay, so you're not going to find the health and wealth gospel in the scriptures. But you're also not going to find God uh, saying that it's wrong to have money. Abraham was a rich man and God blessed him richly. Okay? Job was a rich man. God took all the riches from him in one day and then gave, and then doubled them when he gave them back. You're, you're not going to find riches equaling evil. That's not in there. Communism teaches that. And that that's why, it, to me, communism, socialism, anti-Bible. But you're not going to find in the Bible riches equals evil. You will find love of money equals root of all evil. You will find that. If you love it, you're in trouble. If you love it. If your heart is, is consumed with it, you're in trouble. Uh, <clears throat> turn over to Proverbs chapter 10. Let's look at a few verses over in Proverbs. Again, you're not going to find God magnifying being poor in the Scripture. You're also going to, again, there's a warning about desiring riches too much. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 15. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. Listen, it, it can be a strong city. It can be a, a strong point for a person. The destruction of the poor is, is their poverty. The Bible says that. It also says uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7. Look at this. This is a warning about being consumed with the love of riches. There is, we can put in he or she, there is a person that maketh themselves rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Uh, think of the Laodicean church. That they think they're really rich. They think they're really well off. And God comes and tells them, no, 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 you're poor. <laughs> you're poor, you're blind, you're naked. You, you don't even know, uh, spiritually speaking, your heart's not with me. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. Look at Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 21. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, 
But he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. He that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Look at verse 31. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker. Uh, if we make fun of the poor or if we oppress the poor, this would be a, a good warning to a ruler. Uh, taxing the poor uh, more and more and more. Uh, taxing the poor. Uh, they for, he, they're forgetting they have a maker. They're forgetting they have a creator that's going to judge them one day for that. They're forgetting that. Uh, that's... Uh, I'm just going to throw this in there for free. That's one of the reasons I have such a problem with, with the, the direction the Democratic Party has gone in our country. I personally feel like they're trying to tax the middle class more and more to pay a, a, a section of, of the population to stay home and not work. I just personally think that's what they're doing, just in a nutshell. I think they're trying to tax the middle class more and more and more. They're trying to make them poorer and poorer and poorer uh, so that they can buy votes. I just personally think that's what they're doing. They buy votes. That's what politicians do. Um, it hasn't always been that way, but that's just what they've become. I think it's wrong. Uh, verse number, uh, the, the second part of verse 31, but he that honoreth uh, the poor, hath, uh, honoreth God, hath mercy on the poor. And so uh, the Bible is not anti-poor people. It's not anti-rich people, all right? It's not, it, it doesn't say, hey, you should try to be poor. It doesn't say, hey, you should try to be rich. It just says you should serve God and let the chips fall where they may. It's not saying it's wrong to, to get a good paying job. There are all kinds of, in the story of Ruth, one of my favorite uh, characters in, in, in the story of Ruth is, is Boaz. Boaz is a wealthy man. But he cares about people. He, he leaves extra wheat on the ground for Ruth to get. He's not trying to get anything out of that. He's not trying to get extra money out of that. You know, he's not trying to do anything like that. He's looking out for her. He's honoring the poor, is he not? Uh, so the Bible is not anti being rich. It's not uh, anti, uh, it, it's not glorifying being poor or anything like that. The Bible is against ill gotten gain. When you've gotten rich the wrong way, uh, take uh, just this is an obvious. But let's say a, a drug dealer becomes absolutely filthy rich. You think God's going to bless that? You think God's happy with that? That's ill-gotten gain. That's what it is. You got the gain in an ill way. You got it in a wrong way. So uh, the Lord is against that. The Lord is against idolatry. And the Lord is against materialism that becomes idolatry. He is against that. Uh, idolatry and materialism, they become, they, they, they equal a, a ill-gotten gain has a curse on it. Idolatry and materialism are enslavement. And the devil uses these things to enslave us. Money does not equal the root of all evil. The love of money equals the root of all evil. And I want to leave you with this question tonight. What are you truly treasuring? Are you treasuring things above or things on the earth? I would encourage us to keep money and material possessions in their proper perspective. Something that blessed me about that story that Jeff Williams told when he had pockets full of money, couldn't spend it anywhere, couldn't buy food, <coughs> Couldn't buy anything with it. People in his congregation had lost their life savings. And he said, they took him in, him and his family in, and fed them. After they had just lost everything. Because they had grown a garden. And they cooked and fed them. People who had just lost everything. He said, they still had a wonderful spirit. They weren't downtrodden about it. Folks, when you read about the stock market crash in the 1920s that led to the Great Depression, people committed, a lot of people committed suicide right after that. The suicide rate skyrocketed. Why? Because that was their God. That was their materialism. That was their, that was their idol in their life. But when you look at those Christians in his church, that wasn't their God. 
They had just lost their life savings, but they still had God. So they were just fine. I can't even imagine going through that. It had to be absolutely rough. What are you truly treasuring? Things above or things on the earth? I'm going to ask every head to bow. You do some business with the Lord tonight. And just do a heart check tonight. What are you treasuring? Father, we close tonight. And I just ask you to do a work in our hearts. If there's someone who struggles with material, we all do to a degree, but Lord, if there's someone who's really struggling with it, I pray that you'd give them grace. I pray that you'd help them through this struggle that they're having, this battle. Lord, we ask you to bless our finances. But Lord, help us to keep our heads on straight about them. Help us to keep the right perspective about them, that they are only temporal they are fleeting and that they are going away. Lord, help us to value things in heaven. Help us to treasure heavenly treasures. Lord, help us to keep our focus on the kingdom of, of God, not on this earth. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.